I'm very excited because I received this package today and what's inside is my first real DIY audio project. It's not a kit, it's not something that already exists on the market. It's a self-designed PCB layout and keep on watching because I have something for free for you and maybe you will have very soon some new gear. This is a recreation of the preamp from the legendary SSL 9000 mixing desk. And as I mentioned in the intro, I will show you the whole building process. And later in this video, I share with you the documents so you can build one yourself for a very low price. I'm not the first one cloning this preamp. Back in 2003, a man named Keith Andrews, I think he was an SSL tech, he published the schematic and made it accessible to the DIY world. But it was and still is a very challenging project because you have to edge the PCBs yourself. You need power supply. In the original schematic there is no phantom power, no phase reverse. So you have to do it all by yourself. I built a stereo unit of these and till this day I love them and I still use them. They have tons of gain, they are super low noise, the transients are super sharp and the overall tone is clean without losing anything from the mic signal. I love them for acoustic instruments like piano, guitar, sometimes strings, whenever I need a less colored but very precise signal. So I had some parts laying around and I thought it would be wonderful to put everything in the 500 rec format. I added a switch for phantom power, phase reverse, 50 dB pad and the DI input for your guitar, for your bass, your Fender Rhodes or whatever. So let's get started. I designed my circuit board with KiCad, a free and very versatile software. I underestimated how many components had to fit on the small PCB, but in the end it actually looks pretty neat and clean. I sent the Gerber files to my PCB manufacturer and two weeks later these pretty looking boards were on my workbench. As always, I started soldering the components with the lowest height, resistors and diodes, followed by op-amps, transistors and capacitors. At the end, I added the bigger parts like relays, switches, TRS jack and the volume pot. It was an easy job because all the values are printed on the circuit board. It's like paint by numbers. You just have to be careful with the components that have polarity. These are diodes, electrolytic capacitors and op-amps. Take your time when placing them and double check everything to avoid hours of troubleshooting. And this is what it should look like. I'm on the way to my cousin. He has a CNC and he will do the front panel for me. I designed everything with Cut2D and hopefully it will look good on the aluminium panel. The plan is to engrave my design about 0.2 mm deep into the aluminium. Here you can see my cousin making the panel ready and after positioning and calibrating the machine it was time to start. First the textures, then the contours and finally the lettering. After 20 minutes panel 1 was ready. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Back home, I drilled the holes for the potentiometers, buttons and LEDs by hand, sanded the panels and painted them black. The idea was that the black paint would seep into the engravings and become visible after another round of sanding. It's definitely a lot of work, but the result actually looks pretty good. And after a final sanding, the panels were ready for a final coat of clear vanish. I let it dry for another night and then started the most satisfying part of the work. Okay, so let's talk about the components used in this design. I have some good news and some bad news. First the good news. You can really build this thing on a budget, so the majority of parts you need to fill the circuit board are standard and you can find them all around the world. If you do the front panel by yourself, just do the markings with the permanent marker, something like that. 
I guess, and I'm pretty sure you can build this for under 100 euro or dollars. My shopping cart here in Germany was only 30 euro for the components. So very, very cheap for a high quality preamp. But because it's a vintage design, some parts, to be more precise, three parts are very hard to get. The MAT02 transistor, the TL52 chip and the potentiometer. Especially these transistors are so hard to get because they are out of production. I managed to get some from DigiKey, but the minimum order quantity was 38, so if you need one, I'm your man. You also can find them on eBay like this, but most of them are fake and I learned it the hard way. They produce a massive noise if you turn the potentiometer, the offset voltage is completely off. So please don't use them, try to find the original ones from analog devices. And for the potentiometers, there's one company in this world who's selling those dual reverse logarithmic 2.2 kilo ohm potentiometers. And this is audio maintenance in the UK. I leave a link down below. And this is the finished preamp. Everything works well, it's super quiet and it sounds amazing. I'm talking through it right now with this Biodynamic M88. And of course, you cannot really hear how this preamp sounds because you need a comparison to other preamps. I will do this in one of my next videos, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to build one of these, I will share all the documents you need for free. Everything. Schematic, bill of material, the Gerber files, dimensions for the front panel. You can have it for free. All you have to do is go to my Instagram, text me, and I will share with you all the information. And if you like to give something back to me, it would mean a lot if you just leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. Help this channel growing so I can do more awesome projects. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're not yet at the level to edge your own circuit boards or have them professionally manufactured, I still have some PCBs left. Same goes for the MAT02 transistors. As I said, a lot of companies have a minimum order quantity. I had to order 33 of these and I think 20 PCB, so I still have some left, just text me and I can send it to you. I have to point out that I'm not selling kits, I'm not a company, I'm just a private, individual, nerdy guy who is just passing on some leftover parts. But let me know down in the comments if you would like to see some kits, maybe in the future, because I have so much more awesome projects to share. One of these in the next video, it's also my design and it has something to do with this beautiful mixing desk behind me. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.